familiar with resilience than I am with nobility, okay? Um, noble I have created thee. Um, that's a work in progress. Uh, I try to characterize whatever I do um, with an aspect of nobility since it's part of the creative process. And resilience is, I couldn't do this work unless I could get up in the morning. That's pretty resilient at my age sometimes. Um, and there's a, two large pieces and a small, a very small piece. And in order to do those large pieces, I have to really uh, push myself resiliently to keep at it and to create them um, and to follow them all right I have to follow them because I don't know when once I enter on the journey I don't know what's going to show up okay and um, and part of that has to do with nobility that I'm trying to characterize whatever it is I'm trying to get at uh, it with a, with an aspect of nobility, with an aspect of um, presence of a higher order that um, allows, hopefully allows the viewer to see beyond um, the fact that it's just physical material stuff. It's paint and canvas and, you know, um, and I'm trying to imbue that with something which um, helps people grow. And I think that's part of the, the noble aspect of being a human being is to keep that centered self on growing um, and learning and going, going on the journey, being on the journey. Sometimes we go forward, sometimes we go to the right, Sometimes we go to the left, sometimes we go up, sometimes we go down. So it's a, and that resilience plays into following that trail, following our noble aspect in this, in this realm of existence. You know, nobility went right down the tubes right away and it became um, calcified with meaning kings and queens and dukes and duchesses and all that kind of stuff. And and that has created incredible problems in this world, okay? Um, everybody has created noble. The creation is noble in and of itself. Um, and it's changing and growing all the time. So nobility is not a, a, a steady state unless it's a growing steady state. But it's, it's not absolute. It's you're noble or you're not. You're always changing. And so it's an organic process that we're engaged on. You know, I'm, I'm a white guy. Um, even though I spent a number of years growing up in a black neighborhood and was he, my brother and I were the only two white, white guys around for many, many blocks. And, uh, and never had a sense of being different, you know. I don't know how, I don't know if I escaped it or it just never occurred to me or what was going, I, I don't know. But I never had a sense of like, oh, I shouldn't be here. This is where black folks live, you know, and I'm a white person. Not, never occurred to me. Um, and I went through all my growing up years. Uh, that was in Richmond, North Richmond, California, and I went through all my growing up years uh, between there, um, Berkeley, California, and then San Diego, um, surrounded with a lot of people of color. You know, Japanese, uh, Native Americans, uh, Hispanic, um, black folks, people from the, in Berkeley was really rich because there were people from all over the world. Um, I worked with the with a, an Egyptian um, fellow. So, you know, I don't know how, 
I can only I can only sort of number one. Um, it's not an none of this is an intellectual exercise for me. This is this is an experiential journey that I'm on. I feel things, and I paint my dreams, and so this theme came up after I was embarked on. I had finished um, the 1,312 incantations painting, and had embarked on this other painting, and I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't know what was going to show up. And you see what showed up. I call it a family. And so when the theme, when I read the, what the theme for the next show was, I said, hey, this will work. This is, this is, and this often happens, that I'm doing something, and on the outside somebody says this or that. And, it, and they're, they're joined. They're, you know, they're totally related, and I think that's because um, I go through life uh, chewing things up and digesting them, and they inform me internally. And it's kind of, okay, so that's kind of a magical process, right? Not really, it's called inspiration. And, uh, you know, if you, if you don't wear a mask now, like that, and you go into some place where a bunch of people are and they and they breathe on you, you're liable to get, you know, coronavirus nineteen, you know? So um hey, if I'm around folks who are feeling and thinking and doing things, I'm absorbing. That's energy, that's food for me. And I take it in and I'm I try not to be discriminatory. Um, I try to. Th I trust my digestive system, my internal reality, to say, "Oh, that's poison. Get it out of here," and uh, and this is good, you know. So I have to be careful if I go out and I don't put my mask on. Um, you know, I have to be careful. But working in my studio on my own, um, that's what I'm doing. And that's the result you see. And what I think is, you know, there is the darkest dark without light. And there is the most illumined illumination without darkness. But we live in a world of light and darkness. And they're continually interacting. And I think that's what that quote means.